Hi, and welcome to Riddles in the Dark, where I endeavor to learn and explain the rules of the One Ring 2nd Edition role-playing game by Free League Publishing. The Fellowship Phase Like all tabletop role-playing games, there's downtime between adventures taken that generally, at least in my experience, are either played for a handful of minutes post a game session, or before a new session starts, or happens in between and not something inherent to the game. Yes, a dungeon or game master may play out a full three-hour session, but downtime isn't something integral to most tabletop role-playing games. For the One Ring RPG, however, downtime between adventures, called the Fellowship Phase, is an integral part of the narrative that is being played out. This video will explain how to play out a Fellowship Phase, both as the lore master and as the player. The Fellowship Phase now gives the time for the players to take control on how the narrative is being played out, with the lore master adjudicating the rules of the game for what the players want to do. As the Fellowship Phase marks the conclusion of the previous adventuring phase and time permits, the Fellowship Phase can be run to end this, that session, or be an entire session in its own right, that ends the previous and sets up the next adventuring session. Let's look how the Fellowship Phase is structured. Setting the duration. The fellowship phase usually covers a longer period of in-game time than would be experienced during a normal adventuring phase. Events within the fellowship phase are described in broader strokes, like days, weeks, or even a season. As the time passes, player heroes relax or busy themselves with their own personal work or studies. As noted, to give the player heroes a real break from active adventuring, a fellowship phase should last a minimum of one week up to an entire season. It's up to the lore master to set the length of the fellowship phase, taking into account what the player heroes are doing during that phase. There is a special fellowship phase called Yule, which generally occurs during the midwinter festivities when the cold, long dark of winter in-game sets in, and people generally celebrate the previous year with food, drink, and song. We'll cover the rules of Yule shortly towards the end of the video. Choosing the destination. Once the players are informed about how long the fellowship phase will last, they now have to decide where they will spend it. Generally, player heroes stop at a safe haven to spend the phase as a group, with some exceptions during Yule. To keep gameplay authentic, players should choose a place within a reasonable distance from the area where the company was adventuring during the recent sessions of play, and taking consideration of how long the fellowship will last. For example, Buren and his company have just completed exploring the Star of the Mist, a landmark adventure found in the core rulebook, and have the following places identified as safe havens, which they had adventured before. Bree, Rivendell, and Bywater of the Shire. As the Star of the Mist landmark is located here on the map, Bywater is the closest, closest safe haven, so the Buren and company will spend the fellowship in the company of the hobbits at the Green Dragon Inn. Note, the lore master and players do not need to play out the return journey to the safe haven unless the players have a mind to play out those details. Performing Updates Once the players are in their safe haven, now is the time to perform any updates allowable to their player heroes. These updates represent training, resting to heal grievous wounds, reflects on the events previously transpired, or contemplate how their efforts are not wasted and restores their faith in a brighter future. Let's look at training. It may take an adventuring phase or two to gain enough skill points to increase a player hero's skills one level or one rank. The table found on page 119 as shown here shows the amount of skill points required to increase a skill or train in a previously untrained skill. For example, in order for a player hero to increase his skill from two levels to three levels or ranks, the amount of skill points required is 12 points. Three skill points are usually gained after each three hour session, or one point for every one hour of gameplay. Players do not have to spend all or any skill points and instead bank them for later use, for more expensive upgrades. Players mark their accumulated or remaining skill points here on the player hero sheet. During a single fellowship phase, players can buy a maximum of one rank in each skill. Growth. Players now spend adventure points, gain similarly as skill points for following a session, but instead of spending them on skills, they can buy ranks in either combat proficiencies, valor, 
or wisdom. As with the training skills, a player does not need to spend all or any adventuring points during the fellowship phase and can bank them later use for more expensive levels as seen on the same table found on page 119. Players can spend adventuring points to buy a rank in combat proficiency, valor, or wisdom if they have enough adventuring points accumulated to attain the new rank as shown here. Also, when player heroes reach a new rank of Valor or Wisdom, they also gain a new reward or virtue as listed starting on page 78. During the Fellowship phase, one can only acquire a maximum of one rank in each combat proficiency. They can also buy a rank in either Wisdom or Valor, but not both. If a new attribute value is attained, the scores of all related abilities and features must be updated accordingly. Spiritual Recovery During the Fellowship phase, all player heroes automatically recover the number of hope points equal to their heart score, and they recover them all during Yule. Then, if the adventuring phase resulted in what can be considered a positive outcome in the fight against the encroaching shadow, all members of the company get to remove a number of shadow points as per the outline in 119 of the core rulebook. If the company's actions can be considered to have at least marginally interfered with the return of the shadow, each player hero removes one shadow point. If their deeds can be considered to be actively hindered or damaging the enemy, each player hero removes up to two shadow points. Finally, if the player heroes have committed feats that would gain the attention of the Dark Lord himself, or at least that one of major servants, then the player heroes can remove up to three shadow points. Undertakings. The bulk of the time-consuming events that the players endeavor to do in the fellowship phase is called undertakings. The company has available to them the following activities for which they can choose. Players select a different number of undertakings based on whether the fellowship phase is an ordinary one or during Yule. During an ordinary fellowship phase, the company as a group chooses one single undertaking as a group. During a U Fellowship phase, each player chooses one undertaking instead. Finally, during each Fellowship phase, Ordinary or Yule, the company is entitled to choose one additional undertaking, selected it among those that are listed as free, based on the callings represented among the player heroes. During an Ordinary Fellowship, the maximum undertakings allowed is two. During Yule, the number of undertakings allowed are equal to the number of player heroes in the company plus the one. Players must always select different undertakings unless they are marked Yule activities. Such endeavors can be chosen by any number of player heroes. We'll take a detailed look at each undertaking during a separate video later. Changing useful items. As found in the text box on page 121, during each fellowship phase, the players are free to change the selection of their player heroes' useful items, always respecting the maximum number of items allowed by their current standard of living. On Yule. As mentioned earlier, Yule is a special fellowship phase generally happening over a longer period of time, even years between adventuring phases. It is recommended that Yule occurs once every three fellowship phases when winter arrives, and with it the end of the current year in game. Normally, the company would spend the entire cold season as a single, prolonged fellowship phase, Winter is an unforgiving time and we'll cover how the environment, weather, and how the impact of player heroes and company during gameplay in a later video. In most cases, the company disbands temporarily on occasion of Yule festivities, as each player hero takes the chance to return home and enjoy time amongst family and folk. Three months are enough for any player hero to return home from any location other than the most remote. As already said, Yule brings a change in the calendar and generally players have aged one year. This time spent reflection and learning from their experiences, bringing a level of wisdom. During Yule, all player heroes recover all hope. They also earn a number of bonus skill points equal to their wits rating and add this amount to the total they accumulated during the last adventuring phase. The lore master now updates the company on any changes that are taking place in the world that the player heroes should know about. This ends the overview of the Fellowship phase for the One Ring 2nd Edition role-playing game from Free League Publishing. If you like this video and others that I've created so far, please like,
comment and subscribe as I hope to be putting out more of these videos to help new players and lore masters like myself learn about the One Ring RPG and build more of a following. Thank you for watching and hope to see you back soon.